The next time the market gets hit with a hideous across-the-board decline, I want you to have Pinnacle Foods on your shopping list. That's PF for all you home gamers. Pinnacle is a company you might not have ever heard of, but their products can be found in 85% of American households. You might know them as Bird's Eye Frozen Vegetables, Mrs. Paul's Seafood, Lenders Bagels, Celeste Pizza, as well as Hungry Man Frozen Meals. And Pinnacle also has a grocery business. Uh, here you know them as Duncan Hines, the Cookie and Cake Mixer, maybe Mrs. Butterworth, Log Cabin, what we grew up on. Pinnacle acquires unloved brands and then turns them around. We got behind the stock before it even came public at 20 bucks a, sh a share almost a year ago. Since then, it's given you a true 41% gain. Now, Pinnacle just reported this morning, delivered inline earnings, laid out a multi-year roadmap of incremental sales increases, acquisitions to boost growth, and debt reduction at the same time. It's a kind of long-term household brand story that may be perfect for those who want a lower risk, situation in the portfolio with the potential for excellent dividend growth over time. Don't just take it from me, though. Let's check in with Bob Gamgort. He's the CEO of Pinnacle Foods. Hear more about the quarter and where the company is headed. Bob, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much for coming on. Great. Have a seat. Great okay. to be here. You have a collection of brands we all grew up on, but I think you're doing stuff both to reduce the cost of producing it, which is terrific, but also to change subtly uh, the freshness uh, and, and organic nature of what weren't originally when we were growing up fresh, fresh and organic. Yeah, and no question. There's a couple of things you just touched okay. on here. I mean, first of all, um, our mission is reinvigorating iconic brands, which, as you said, we take brands that other people have declared to be non-strategic, huh. and we make them fresh and relevant. We do it two ways. One is we drive productivity really hard, okay. and that gives us fuel to invest back into these brands to bring them to life through innovation, renovation, and marketing. And that health and wellness trend is certainly clear in our biggest brand, which is Bird's Eye. Now, can you make it happen? In other words, like I see, uh, this is a farmer's garden. Obviously, this is much more uh, that's natural from, organic. That's from Blassic, yes. Right? And, and I see, but then I see Mrs. Paul's, I think, process. I think, see Hungry Man, I see process. Can you have the best of both uh, possible worlds? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a broad portfolio, but our single largest brand is Bird's Eye. It's over a billion dollars in retail sales. And I really think we're just scratching the surface on the potential there. But within our, our total portfolio, about 40% of our sales come from products uh, whose primary ingredient is fruits or vegetables. Right. And we do not eat enough fruits we and do vegetables. Not. In, fact, in fact, you know, it's, it's good that you say that because there's a lot of debate about what health and wellness is. Fewer than 10% of Americans eat the minimum required vegetables in a day. So we see that as a tremendous opportunity to uh, expand that consumption. In the conference call, you were quite bullish about the idea that there are a lot of potential targets out there. I know you bought Wishbone. It seems like we it's did. already you've, it's one of the big gainers in the quarter. Yes. Clearly, it's yes. already working. Uh, Ragu mentioned as being a, a possible for sale. Would that be something you would look at? Yeah, let, without talking about anything specific. Yeah, okay, yeah I know, because you can't. But let me about talk it. about the criteria yes. for an acquisition for us. We're looking for brand leaders or those that we can get to leadership. We don't want to buy distressed brands. Okay. And one of the big factors that we really consider is how much synergy, how much productivity can we generate? Because, again, that gives us the firepower to invest in these brands to make them very fresh and, uh, and relevant. Now, you be going up against an outfit that we've had on many times, uh, David Winter's B&G Foods. Mm -hmm. How can you, uh, do you have the firepower to beat them? Or, or do you just say that you don't see them that much? They're, in, they're buying a different kind of brand? Yeah, we don't overlap in a, a lot of categories okay. with them. And I think that where we go out and hunt for acquisitions doesn't really have a lot of overlap. If you take a look at the size of, of the acquisitions that each one of us has gone after. Now, I looked at your percentage that's domestic versus international, and I realized, like, I, why wouldn't this fly in Mexico? Why wouldn't this be one in Africa and Asia? But you're all domestic. Yeah, I, look, in my past, I've run a global business. Right, that's why I and, know your background. But very few food brands travel internationally. There are a lot of opportunities here in the U.S. And let me tell you something. Okay. One of the signature parts of our, our business model that allows us to add value is probably one of the best-in-class overhead cost structures. And if you're going to do that, you've got to be focused. And we think there's a tremendous amount of opportunity here in North America to leverage that business model into more categories, into more brands. Okay, now what I've been telling people is given that... You're not going to go crazy, mm -hmm. okay? You're going to do it with cash flow. You bought Wishbone already. You paid it down. Um, that this can be a serial grower of a dividend because of cost takeout, because of acquisitions, and because of inventions. Fair depiction. It's a very fair depiction. In fact, our free cash flow yield is probably the highest in the industry. Right. And that gives us a lot of optionality to pay down debt, obviously to pay a dividend, which is an mm -hmm. important part of our investor proposition, and make more acquisitions. Now, one thing I felt, I know that food companies are likely because they don't have that much to do with the government, but I know they cut down food stamps. Yes. And it would seem, uh, we grew up, I grew up on Duncan Hines. My mom made Duncan Hines yeah. cakes. And, you know, you did it, but frankly, you weren't rolling in it. 
you know, we weren't, we, my mom didn't want to go buy the store, the big cakes from mm -hmm. a fancy store. So you made it yourself. Um, but this might be something that a food stamp cutback would hurt. No, you know, the, the food, best as we can tell in the industry, the snap reductions okay. you're talking about is yes. about a 1% headwind. That's all? Yeah, in total, across all of food. Okay. And no, there are some in the farm bill, they're talking about some additional cuts to come right. in the future. Right, right. It, it cuts across the industry fairly evenly, and so we're not seeing any disproportionate impact to it. But let's be clear. Right. The American consumer is challenged, and the industry has had a challenge growing, and that's just one more headwind that's out there. And we know that the supermarket has been challenged itself. Mm -hmm. Are you in enough of the parts of the supermarket that are not price war oriented? Yeah, I, I think we are. I mean, I, I, you know, the supermarkets still generate almost three quarters of food sales in total. Okay. And there's been some shift in where the growth is within channels, uh, of course, and, and you've talked about them right. here on the show. But we've got wide representation. We're in 13 right. different categories. Yeah. And our, tr our opportunity is to take a lot of those trends that you talk about in terms of natural and right. organic and bring them to the average American and, consumer. And that's who we're selling to. And you know, I remember Duncan Hodge was one box, was red box. Absolutely. These are all your creations, these new holiday velvets, spring velvets with cupcakes, salted caramel. These are yours since you took it over. Absolutely. Yeah, these are all our recent introductions. We did a red velvet cupcake, which was just on the cover of Parade, Parade Magazine a couple okay. of weeks ago, as voted by consumers to be one of the best new products in 2013. This is your special cake well, with the holiday kind of velvets with your face on top. Pay huge dividends. I, I know your license fee is very, very high for, for that. <laughs> but our, our opportunity is in all of these categories is to go from what used to be a box of devil's food cake and right. add a lot of value with all of these great varieties. Well, it's there. working at yeah, good numbers. It is. Consistent dividends. What people said, I mean, this is an IRA 401k stock, guys, okay? Not going to shoot the lights out, but that's not for everybody because sometimes when you shoot the lights out, you go to zero. This is the kind of solid story that I like. That's Bob Gamgord. He's the CEO of Pinnacle Foods, symbol PF. They have money's back after the break.